Hi folks, do you find it annoying when you have a box full of USB cables but you just can't seem to find the right one? It happens to me every time. So instead of just ranting about it, I'm going to build an extension USB cable out of a usual network cable that you'd find lying around. So let's see how we do this. So folks, these are all the things that we need to convert a Cat5 network cable into a USB extension. We need a Cat5 cable, of course. Then we need two set of male USB plugs. And these are uh, the easy snap-on ones. So all you do is you solder the wire onto these terminals and then just put this in the put this in the holder here like this and then just snap them on and similarly we need two female pins as well now the only different thing that I'm doing with the new cable instead of the old one is that the old one only had one extension but a network cat5 network cable actually has four pairs of wire in it so what we can actually do is we can use it to create a dual usb extender and that is exactly what we're going to do with this so the reason we need two usb connections instead of just a single one is because when you are programming a micro microcontroller you need one of these or especially an avr this is the usb asp serial programmer which uses one of your USB ports. And the other is a USB to TTL serial device, which you can use to debug your sketches or programs on the microcontroller. So any given at any given time on a microcontroller, I need two USB connections close to it so that I can hook up both of these devices. All right, so once we have all the things that we need, the actual process is pretty simple. Uh, all I'm going to do is snip off these ends. Now one thing to remember about this is all the Cat5 cables come in two varieties. One is the solid variety and one is the stranded variety. Now for usually for a USB extension cable, it would be much better to use a stranded cable because a stranded cable is much flexible than a solid ute cat5 cable and most of the patch cards that you would find are the stranded variety right so in this cat5 cable we have four pairs of wires one pair two pair three pair and the fourth pair so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of these for one of the USB connector and the other two for another USB connector. Now in theory, you can go really fancy if you want and connect three USB connectors by you commoning out or by using one pair for a common power connection for all these USB. But what that would mean is now you're limited to only up to 500 milliamps on all of these connectors combined. So for an application that I'm using it for now, this should be fine, but I really don't need a third USB connector yet. And the soldering to these connectors would be pretty ugly. So what I'm going to stick for now is I'm going to just put two connectors one on each of the two pairs. If you use a cable like this to, to extend USB, try not to draw a lot of power out of this because if the whole USB current, which is 500 milliamps, travels over the length of the wire that we have here, you are definitely going to have some losses in the wire. And then it is very much possible that the voltage drop in, in this wire is going to be so much that you won't have any usable voltage at the end of the line. So this is good for really small stuff like this, but if you really want 
USB extension for a longer duration, you really need something called as an active repeater for USBs. Make sure that you use the same pair of connectors for each USB connector. You don't want to accidentally cross them over and then redo the whole thing. All right, so we slide these on before we start soldering or else the whole purpose of a heat shrink tubing is defeated. All right, so we have those on. Now let's start soldering yeah, before that. All right, now I'm just pinning these wires first. Now, while soldering these, just make sure that you keep in account the orientation of these wires because that's the exact same orientation you need on the other end as well. So on a USB connector, the way the terminals are placed are is you have ground and you have positive on the ends and then you have the data terminals in the center. So for to maximize the effectiveness of a stranded pair, you need to use the same colors. So for example, you would use the I'm here, I'm using the brown and the brown striped for the data in the center and the green goes around it or vice versa because I can see that my greens are slightly shorter than my brown. So I'm going to use the green for data and the brown is going to be used for power. All right, folks, I to undo this. Forgot the, all right, there you go, folks. The first connector is done. I'm just gonna note down the order in which I have connected these. And to get the orientation, the connectors are on the top, on this side. I note I have brown striped, I have green. Then I have green striped and then I have brown. So I'm just making a note of these just in case I forget. Now I'm going to take a quick measurement of how long the wire needs to be so that I can cut. All right, so there you go. We need a lot longer wire, good. <clears throat> so it will be much easier to solderize But I should have done this before. Alright, so after doing both of the male connectors, I'll go ahead and connect these female connectors and the same way should be oriented the connections are up top, the connections are up top and the VV order is brown striped, green, green striped and brown. So that will keep a consistent order, consistent order with these two connectors that we have done. Right, so there we have it folks, the first female connector in place. I'll just do the other one and then I'll get back to you. So now I've completed soldering both the sides of the connectors. I'm gonna do a quick sanitary test to see if both these connectors work. And if, if they do, I'm just gonna put on these covers and shrink these tubes.
Whoop. There you go. You hear the bing and it's powered up. So that one works. Let's try the other one. And you have it. So both of these work. So I'm just gonna quickly tidy up things on these and we should be done. There you have it folks. We have the USB extension cable with two connectors and this is about 10 to 12 feet of, of wire. That's all folks. See you in the next video.